who should you pick for your 2022 Fantasy Fishing Bassmaster Classic picks? Let's find out. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to the vlog. This is our 2022 Bassmaster Classic Fantasy Fishing Picks. We need to say congratulations to D. Lesman who won week two on the Harris chain. He absolutely put it down. But this week we are looking at, or this video, we are looking at the Lake Hartwell Bassmaster Classic. But if you like this, make sure you hit that subscribe and that thumbs up button and also comment below and tell me what you think. It really does help the channel. It helps spread the word, helps the channel grow. So I took a little step down, little step down from that perch that I was on after the week one. Uh, still ranked number 386th overall in the country. I'm in the top 98.8%, and I dropped a third place in our league, which really doesn't matter. It's about you guys winning. But today we're going to talk about all the groups, group A through E, on some of the guys that you can, or maybe, maybe you should pick, and maybe you shouldn't. But we're going to start off with group E. Group E is kind of tough. First and foremost, a majority of the people are open winners or people who won a bid to the Classic by winning a tournament. Now these guys are fantastic anglers, but finding information about them is very tough. When I look at how uh, who I pick, a lot of the times I like to pick people who have experience on there and try to pick the pick the person who not only has the most experience, but also has done the best in those fishing tournaments on Hartwell. And most of these guys have not fished Hartwell. You have Mark Frazier, Justin Hamner, uh, Tristan McCormick, uh, Shane Powell, KJ Queen, Tyler Rivett, and uh, Taylor Smith. Like I said, this is going to be a hard, uh, hard group to pick. There's some great anglers in here. Uh, Mark Frazier has had a top 50, Justin Hamner's had a top 50 and also a top 35. You have anglers like Tyler Rivet, Rivet who's uh, the 91st ranked angler in the world. He's had two, uh, top, two top 50s and two top 35s this year uh, on the Elite Series. He's from Raceland, Louisiana. And then you have the person I think is going to do best in this group, and that's KJ Queen. Now, KJ's had one top 50 and one top 35, but KJ is a very well-rounded angler. Uh, if you missed his rise in the Opens to qualify for the Elites, he, he pretty much crushed it uh, to get into the Elites. He was one of the was one of, if not top three anglers in all of the opens altogether. He, uh, like I said, he's well-rounded, can fish shallow, he can fish uh, deep. And that's something that's gonna happen this week uh, on Hartwell. There's gonna be, it's gonna, it's gonna change drastically. In the past, uh, we've had four classics in the past, well, we've had four tournaments on Lake Hartwell over the past, I don't even know, 10, 10 11, 12 years. Uh, Jordan Lee won a classic there. Uh, this is this is a uh, usually the classic is held when the water is really cold. But what's going to happen here is we're going to see some fish probably moving up. I think there's still going to be some spots and some stuff like that that are fishing deep. But we're going to have some really fantastic weather for the classic, something that we normally don't have. I think we're going to see fish, those pre-spawn fish moving up, trying to find some bait. I think those uh, that that water's going to warm up a little bit and get into that that fun zone, and I think that KJ just being well rounded can do it all. He can he can fish deep, he can fish shallow. So in my group E, my pick is KJ Queen. In Group D, we start to see a little sprinkle of some guys that are worth looking at. Your anglers like 
David Mullins, who's literally on a tear to start off the year. He has got two top tens in the first two tournaments. Other anglers like Brian New from South Carolina should do pretty well and probably one of the favorites in that group because Brian will know Lake Hartwell pretty well. Other anglers like Luke Palmer and Matthew Robertson, Hunter Schryrock are in this group and those are also great anglers. Guys that are going to do very well. My pick though is a sentimental pick. I want to see my buddy Brandon Card do well. I think Brandon shouldn't be in Group D. I think he should be probably in Group B or C, but it is what it is. He's had two top 35s this year, fishing very well. Brandon always gets off to a good start, and really, Brandon knows what it takes to win the Classic. He has had uh, some good finishes at the Classic and then some bad finishes. And in these groups, in the, in the lower groups, it's really hard to find people who have a lot of experience on Hartwell. And Brandon, while he doesn't have a ton of experience on Hartwell, he does know it. He's had a 49th finish in 2019, which was really pretty, pretty bad. But I think, I think this is his year. Uh, and I only say that because I've seen some of his social media stuff, and he seems to have found something on Hartwell early on. Will it pan out through the the week? I mean, we can only hope. And uh, as a sentimental favorite, I'm taking Brandon Card in Group D. In Group C is where things start getting a little bit fun. We have Drew Benton, John Cruz, Buddy Gross, who just won, Matt Heron, Steve Kennedy, who I'll never ever pick ever again, Lee Livesey, uh, Scott Martin, who's trying to win one for his dad. Brian Schmidt and Kyle Welch are all absolutely fantastic anglers. And you got to remember, if you make the classic, win if you make it, winning the classic is the easy is easy or easier because there's not as many anglers out there. There's only 52 anglers and you know there's about 10 anglers that are open anglers and so forth that really I don't want to be mean, but they really don't have a shot at winning. And some of these guys are just all around studs. Looking at the favorite Scott Martin is one of the favorites here and it makes sense buddy gross just won over here on on the harris chain but scott martin seems to be a very very good pick the favorite in this group is scott martin and scott martin's had some good results here he came in 18th place in 2016 had a 67th fit 67th finish a 43rd and a 55th finish he has good a very good knowledge of lake hartwell and probably should do very good. Uh, this is his first classic. He is, you know, he really wants it. So I can see a lot of people taking uh, Scott Martin. Steve Kennedy has a lot of experience on here too. He's had a 54th, a 34th, a 103rd, and a 39th, but I'm not taking him for sure. Um, I've been burned by him too many times and I just can't do it anymore. That's, that's the God's honest truth. Uh, people like Drew Benton has had a 20th uh, here recently, so that's pretty good. But my pick on this one is John Cruz. He's had a 23rd, a 31st, a 33rd, and a 16th. And John has everything that this is gonna uh, that this lake needs. I think John's probably gonna fish offshore. I think he's gonna drop that Ned rig or or a rattle trap or something that he specializes in or that small jig that he created last year. I think John can do everything it takes to win here. Buddy Gross also, I think he has a very good shot at, at being here. Doesn't have a lot of time on the water, but still a very good pick. But like I said, my pick for here, and while Matt Heron had a recent finish of 19th in 2019, I still like I really, really like John Cruz here. I think John Cruz is a solid pick in Group C. When we get to Group B, gosh, the names of everybody that's on this group is ridiculous. Stetson Blaylock, Drew Cook, John Cox, Jeff Gustafson, uh, Taku Ito, Corey Johnson, who probably a lot of people are going to be looking at. Shane LeHue, Brandon Lester, Brock Mosley, I 
who I love, Brock Mosley, Gerald Swindle, and Chris Zaldane. Gerald Swindle, the probably the biggest name that's never won the Classic. Uh, one of the guys that everybody enjoys seeing up on stage. But this isn't about the stage. This is about catching fish. And uh, while I think there's some of these guys are pretty solid picks, like Chris Zaldane had a 25th finish in 2019, I think Gerald Swindle has had, also has had a 10th, a 27th, and a 21st. So I think that's not too bad. Brandon Lester is just fishing phenomenal right now. I don't think you can can really say anything bad about him at all. I was trying to find his his some of his stuff on here uh, to do it. Corey Johnston, I don't think he can do bad. He had a 14th and an 8th. He's had some great finishes uh, with a ton more anglers than the 52 anglers that are in the Classic. So I could see a lot of people taking Corey Johnston here. Stetson Blaylock has done very well here, but my pick is of course, John Cox. I know, surprise, surprise, surprise. But why? Why, Steve, would you pick John Cox for the third tournament in a row? First off, he should be in Group A. There's no doubt about it. He's had a 20th finish in 2018. He's had a first place finish in 2016. He's had a fifth place finish in 2014. And then he's had a 57th and the 76th. He is the ninth ranked angler in the world currently. He's on fire. He's had two top tens in the first two tournaments. If this lake fishes shallow and those fish start moving up, John Cox is going to clear clean this one. He will win this one if it comes down to that. If it stays cold, which it is not predicted to do, John Cox could have a trouble. And that's where you might see Corey Johnston or someone like that. But in my opinion, right now, I'm sticking with the guy everyone should have on their fantasy fishing team, and that's John Cox. And there's no reason not to believe that he cannot, not only will he win, not win this group, but he could win the whole damn thing. He is that good on Hartwell. And that's scary. And finally, Group A, where we have every great angler on the face of the earth. Matt Array, Hank Cherry, Jason Christie, Brandon Cobb, who a lot of people are going to pick. Because Brandon Cobb, this is his home lake. He also won it last time they were there. Uh, Seth Fighter, and I said it right. AOI winner. Austin Felix, Greg Hackney. Everyone's going to be looking at Greg Hackney. Greg Hackney could win this sort of thing. Chris Johnston, Brandon Palinick, Jacob Prosnick, Patrick Walters. I think you could spin a wheel and just take anybody, and it's a good shot that they win in this one. This is a really tough one because you, you, when you start looking at past experiences, some of these guys have just done really, really well. Brandon Cobb, like I said, won in 2019, had a 27th in 2016, and a 36th in 2014. I I don't see I don't see how you don't take him. We talked about uh, Chris Johnston, even though I have the wrong Chris, I have the wrong one there. Chris Johnston has had a 38th and a 12th in recent year. Hank Cherry's back-to-back -back classic champion, and really, you get here and he he gets here and he just wins the damn thing. I kind of feel a little weird picking Hank Cherry. I just think it's so hard to win back-to-back. I fished with Brandon uh, Brandon Palinek last time he was on Hartwell. Boy, that was cold. And this is not going to fish cold. Seth Fighter, 24th and an 18th. Greg Hackney's had a 35th, 26th, 58th, and 5th in 2008. Everybody on this list on this list is just one great angler after another. Jacob Prosnick, a fifth, a fifth. A 29th and a 70th. I mean, really, the hardest thing for me to do in this group is not to take Jacob Prosnick. I don't know why I'm doing this, but I'm gonna go with Jason Christie in this league, in this one. And here's why. I think between I think Jacob and Greg Hackney are the most experienced anglers on this pond or this lake. Jacob uh, Christie has had a third, a 24th, a 31st, a 25th, 
and a first in 2011. It's his eighth classic appearance. I think he should have won two classics already. That's I want that to be heard. I think he should have won two classics already. And I think this is his time. He's from Oklahoma. He knows the area, knows how to fish deep, knows how to fish shallow. I can tell you he hasn't had the greatest start of the year, but he wants this. This is his legacy on the line. And I think, well, it isn't his legacy on the line. Jason Christie will go down as one of the best anglers to ever fish. He's that good. He's going to fish a pattern, and the pattern will work. I'm not joking. This is a guy that I really like. But I could, like I said, I could also see anybody taking Brandon Cobb. So, for me, it's Jason Christie. So there you have it. I hope this helps you. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. Make sure you comment below and tell me what you think. I should mention, this is the third time I've recorded this because the first two times I looked like a fool. But what else is new? Remember, take a kid fishing. Get your fish on. I didn't point. See y'all soon. And good luck. Cheers. Hit like and subscribe. Take your own kids fishing. Pfft.